Hi everyone, today we will discuss addition of vectors. So let us see how the vectors are added. Suppose we have two vectors, the vector A and the vector B. They can be parallel to each other, they can be anti-parallel vectors or they can make some angle with respect to each other. So arbitrarily we have these vectors A as well as vector B. Now we have to add these two vectors. Okay. <coughs> The, when we want to find the addition of these two vectors or addition of vector, it is also termed as the resultant of the vector. So either we have to find the resultant of these two vectors or we have to find the addition of the two vectors. Now we can say, let us say angle between A and B it is theta. So if we say angle between A and B is theta, so either we can write this way or we can write this way angle between A and B it is theta. Now whether we should take this angle, angle between A and B as theta or this angle between A and B that we will just discuss. Now angles are measured in the anti-clockwise direction, angles are measured in the anti-clockwise direction with respect to x-axis that, that is the convention. All angles we will measure if you take these quadrants. So if this is your x-axis and this is y-axis, then angles are measured in the anti-clockwise direction. That is the standard convention. We can measure in the clockwise direction, but we have to do certain changes as far as the convention is concerned. So here, if you say angle between A and B, A and B, vector A and vector B. So in this this becomes the reference vector. So we are measuring the angle between A and B with respect to A. And if you say angle between B and A, B and A, here the reference vector becomes B. Any angle between B and A means from B towards A. When we say angle between A and B means from A towards B. So when we say angle between A and B is theta, it means from A towards B in which direction? In the anti-clockwise direction from A angle between A and B so from A towards B in the anti-clockwise direction now here so this way we can consider either this theta or we can consider this theta but the second condition is as far as the resultant of the this was this is the convention for measurement of the angle angles are measured in the anti-clockwise direction with respect to positive x-axis that is one concept that we have to follow another co concept as far as addition or resultant of vectors are concerned is that <coughs> When we consider this A and B, the vector head of one vector should be joined with the tail of the another vector. Head of first vector, it should be joined with the tail of the another vector. Then only we can find the resultant of a vector considering the tail of the first with the head of the second. So here you can consider this. head of the first vector, it should be joined with the tail of the another vector. So it is tail of the another vector. Okay, This is the tail of the vector B and this is head of the vector A. Now join the tail of the first vector with the head of second vector. The tail of the first vector with the head of second vector. So that line as far as the graphical representation is concerned, that line gives us the resultant of the vector. Let us say it is vector C. So that line gives us the resultant of the vector when we join the tail of the first with the head of the second. So that is the condition. So we have one is the convention as far as the angle measurement is concerned. It is always measured in the anti-clockwise direction with respect to positive x-axis. Another is as far as the addition of vectors are concerned, head of first, it should be joined with the tail of second, then join the head tail of the first with the head of second that line always gives you the resultant of the vector. This is the prerequisite as far as the calculation of resultant of vectors are concerned or addition of vectors are concerned. Now <coughs> let us consider both the concept together. Here I, angle between A and B it is theta. So 
as we have just seen angle between a and b theta now we have two options to represent either angle between a and b theta we can represent like this or we can represent angle between a and b like this here angle between a and b so a should always be considered as your reference factor so from a towards b so there is nothing wrong in this now i have extended this line with this dotted and then because this line is parallel to this so direction between this and this it will be same as direction between this and this so if angle between a and b it is theta so either i represent with respect to this line or this line as i have done here that will be same as angle between this line and this line because this line it is parallel to this one but i will take this angle as theta not this as theta angle between a and b as far as addition of vector is concerned because my head of first vector has to be joined with tail of the second vector so in this case you can see the tail of the first vector that is vector a is joined with the tail of the second vector so that condition is not justified as far as this representation or this uh, concept is concerned theta it is same either i can take theta like this or i can take theta like this but i have to maintain the another condition that the tail of the first vector has head of the first vector has to be joined with the tail of the second vector in this case tail of the first vector is joined with the tail of the second vector so it is not able to justify the second required condition for addition of vector so i will not consider this we will consider this just extend this line okay now with this extended line so when we have considered so this line is parallel to this if you take length of this same as length here it means this will also represent your vector a because direction of this line it is same as this magnitude we are considering same length of this line i am considering same as length of this line so magnitude length of this line will represent the magnitude of the vector a so magnitude i am taking same direction i am taking same it means from the concept of equality of vector this vector will be same as this vector so i can name it as vector a now when this is vector a and this is vector b so angle between a and b means from a towards b so from a towards b so this becomes your theta now in this diagram both the conditions are satisfied head of the first vector it is joined with the tail of the second vector so this is the tail of the vector b and this is your head of the vector a so that condition is satisfied at the same time the angle measurement convention that is also satisfied so i can consider this so it means here this will now represent our vector a and this will even when i say represent this as vector a so that is as equivalent as this one so we have not changed anything as far as the vector a is concerned neither we have changed the magnitude of the vector nor we have changed the direction of the vector so now let us see how these two vectors will be added so if this is vector a and now as we have considered this is your vector b and this angle is suppose theta to find the resultant of the vector we will need x component of all the vector as well as y component of all the vector so if you join this point with this one and suppose this is your vector c then we can write vector c it is equal to vector a plus vector b this is the vector representation as far as addition of the two vector a and b is concerned now here in this equation both direction as well as magnitude both are involved now we have to separate them we have to calculate the magnitude of this vector c as well as we have to calculate the direction of the vector c that is the direction of the resultant vector that we get after addition of vector a as well as this vector b so to separate that we will calculate the x component of all the vectors as well as y component of all the vectors this is the simplest way to calculate addition of vector or resultant of the vector calculate x component of all the vectors and calculate y component of all the vector x will be added with x y components it will be added with y and then finally we will find the resultant of the vector so here 
x component of vector a is what same as a because we are taking x axis along this a so let us say this is your x axis and this is your y axis so x component of vector a remains same as a and y component because this is vector b and this is the perpendicular so y component of this vector b it will be this and x component of vector b it will be this so here this angle is theta this is the vector b here so can you say this component it will be b cos theta and this component it will be b sin theta <coughs> This is b cos theta as well as b sin theta. So y component is b sin theta and x component is b cos theta. So <coughs> the x component of this resultant vector c that will be equal to how much? A plus b cos theta. So x component, if I write c x, okay, x component of the vector c, it will be equal to your a plus b cos theta. Now you can see. I am not putting vector representation over A and B as far as this equation is concerned because now I am right now I am considering only the magnitude part of that. So we have added x component and that is A plus B cos theta. Y component of this it will be how much? <coughs> 0 plus B sin theta because Y component of vector A it is 0 y component of vector b it is b sin theta so cx is a plus b cos theta cy is 0 plus b sin theta so <coughs> this is c suppose x component is cx and y component is cy so what will be the resultant because these two lines are always perpendicular to each other so uh, resultant will be what cx square plus cy square square root so from there we can calculate magnitude of this vector c it will be equal to your cx square means x component is square plus y component square square root so cy square square root so that will be equal to a plus b cos theta plus b sin theta it is 0 plus b sin theta so i am just writing this so a plus b cos theta whole square plus b sin theta whole square square root now we can simplify it. So you will get a square a plus b square cos square theta a plus twice of a b cos theta a plus b square sin square theta. So this gives us you can keep this and this together so that you will get a square a plus b square means cos square theta a plus sin square theta plus 2ab cos theta. So this is a square a plus b square because cos square theta plus sin square theta is 1. So we can write this. So you can put this square root sign. You can put this square root sign here and finally you have this. So magnitude of this vector c and the magnitude of the resultant vector it is square root of a square plus b square plus 2 a b cos theta so this way we calculate the magnitude as far as the direction of vector c is concerned you can see this a here and c here this was your b and this is your vector c now if this c makes angle suppose alpha with the x-axis here vector a is taken along the x-axis so we can treat this as x-axis so if c makes angle alpha with the x-axis then tan alpha that will be equal to how much if you consider this perpendicular so tan alpha this divided by this so this is y component of the vectors and this much is x component of the vector so can you say tan alpha is equal to b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta so this is the direction so alpha is the direction of the magnitude of or the magnitude of the resultant of the two vectors or alpha is the angle that the vector c makes with the x axis so that is b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta so this gives you the direction of the resultant of the vector and this gives us the magnitude of the resultant of the vectors now here you can see 
this was not only b sin theta, this was 0 plus b sin theta. 0 was what? 0 was the component. Why component of vector A? Because A is along x axis. If A would have been at some angle, then A will also have some component along x axis as well as y axis. So, this in general it represents sum of y component of all the vector divided by sum of x component of all the vector. This represent x square plus y square square root means x is the sum of all x component of the vectors and y is, is the sum of all the components of around y axis. So, just calculate x component of all the vectors, y component of all the vectors then do the calculation square root of x square plus y square that gives you the resultant of the vector any magnitude of resultant of the vector. And if the resultant makes angle alpha with the x axis then tan alpha is simply y com sum of y component of all the vector divided by sum of x component of all the vector. So, this is the way that you can consider. So, just for two vectors you can remember this equation or you may not remember that is up to you and this is for the direction. When I say you may not remember because the logic is or the concept behind is this just calculate x component of the vector, y component of the vectors, add x component together, add y component together, x square plus y square square root that gives you the resultant of the vector. Similarly, y upon x that gives you the angle that it makes in 10 alpha with the x axis. So, that way you can calculate. Now, if we use the same logic, suppose you have to add vector A, vector B, vector C, vector D and so on. What should we do? Just calculate Ax, Bx, Cx, Dx and all that. Any x component of all the vector. Similarly, calculate Ay, By, Cy, Dy of all the any y component of all the vectors. The resultant if it is suppose r then x square plus y square square root. This will be the magnitude of that resultant ok. And if the resultant makes angle alpha with the x axis then tan alpha it will be equal to your y upon this x. Now what does this x and y represent? x means ax plus bx plus cx plus dx and so on and y means ay plus by plus cy plus dy and so on. So, this way we can calculate. So, if you have to add any number of vectors, you do not have to do all those calculations like this. Just calculate x component of all the vectors, y component of all the vectors, x square plus y square square root that gives you result magnitude of the resultant vector and if it makes angle alpha with the x axis then tan alpha it is equal to y component divided by x component. So, this way we can add any number of vectors without any calculation problem or without any tedious calculation. So, x component, y component get the resultant like this and get the angle like this. I hope this is clear. So, in the next video we will discuss problems on vectors because we have discussed addition of the vector, resolution of the vector, position vector. So, all the concepts behind this topic and now we will start solving problems on this. Thank you.